So let's take a look at this example problem 3.3. In this problem here, uh, the natural frequency of a cantilever beam with a lumped mass at its tip, as shown in the figure below, can be determined dynamically. So the mass is deflected by an amount that's given to us as A is equal to 1 inch and released. The ensuing motion, which is shown in the plot below, indicates that the damping in the system is very small. So that's an assumption that we'll make there is very small damping. Um, they want us to compute the natural frequency in radians per second, so that's the units we want to be in, as well as in hertz. And they want us to tell them what the period is. So this situation is a straightforward problem, but it actually reflects a lot of what we're going to see in reality, whether it's in a laboratory experience, uh, real job life experience, where you're given some data set in a format that is not uh, completely accurate. So all we have, we don't have precise data here. All we have is this graph here. We may or may not even have the data behind it. In this case here, we're assuming we have another data behind it. All we can see is this plot here. That's all we have. So we need to back some information off of this plot, this hard copy of this plot, in order to calculate our natural frequency in, fre in uh, radians per second and in hertz, as well as the period. And I'm going to take this problem one step further. And what we're going to do is once we've calculated all that information based off this given hard copy of the plot, we're going to go ahead and then create a new data set and some uh, numerical data that we can then plot again to double check with a numerical solver, maybe MATLAB, Excel. I'm going to do it in Excel to double check to make sure that we can then get that plot based upon the calculated period and frequency. So now that we've had a chance to look at the problem statement and understand everything that they've given us within the wording as well as the given diagrams and plots and what they're asking us to solve for, what we want to do is create a setup page. where We can summarize that information in one clear and concise place that we can reference back to as we're completing the solution to the problem. So I have here this problem's labeled, dealing with example 3.3 from lecture 3.2, it's a cantilever beam problem. They give me in this problem here that A is equal to 1 inch deflection and u of t is going to be that distance from the horizontal. They're asking us to solve for our natural frequency period, or omega sub n and t. So when we have down here, here's our cantilever beam with a mass on the end here. We can see, okay, here it is at the horizontal here. We go up here where it's pulled up to one inch and released. So there's our a is equal to one inch. And this distance from the horizontal with respect to time is our u of t function. That's what we were plotting with respect to time is that u of t versus time. So we know we start this, we pull it up to A, so at time is equal to zero, we're pulling this all the way up. So this is our time is equal to zero right here. We're pulling it up to one inch. That's our starting point right there. So we know when time is equal to zero, U of T is equal to one. So that's the one piece of information that we have. From there, we can also follow the graph, and from this here, we can roughly tell where pieces are. So one point that we do see is when we get right here, we'll figure this is a half a cycle, this is one cycle, this is one and a quarter cycle right here. So one and a quarter cycles, we know that we're intersecting our y-axis here with a u of t value of zero. Now from there, what we need to do is we need to estimate. So we estimate this by drawing straight down here. Okay, here's 0 0.25. Here's 0 0.5, so we're looking at approximately 0 0.4 for a value of time at a cycle of one and a quarter. So this is where we need to interpret from this hard copy of this plot to try to back out some numerical data. So it's a little bit difficult. Now one thing we do want to assume is that damping the system is very small, and that's going to be important as we're going through and modeling this. So now that we've got that setup page created, we know all of our given information, we have all of our given plots, we know what they're asking us to solve for, so now we can kind of come up with a governing equation or a method in this case for which we're going to use in order to solve the problem. So we reference back to our first setup page, we're like, okay, what are we ultimately looking for? Okay, we're looking for our omega n and our t here, our natural frequency and our period, and we need to get that obtaining information and values from the given hard copy of the plot. From the problem statement. So again, in many real world applications and experiments, we may have to interpret data that has been collected. We may not have all of the data there. We might just have this final plot solution from years and years ago, and we need to recreate that data to move on and continue the experiment.
So this is where we need to back information off of that hard copy of the plot. So from this graph, again, as we just mentioned on the previous page, we can kind of do an interpretation here and we see, okay, one and a quarter cycles, we're at approximately a time of 0 0.4 seconds. So with that piece of information and also the information that when time is equal to zero, U of T is equal to one, that value of A is equal one inch, where uh, our graph is going to intersect our Y axis at that point. So undamped because of what we saw in our assumption here. So again, if we go back to that first page, we have our assumptions at the bottom. And we assume that damping in the system is very small. So it's very small, we're considering it to be an undamped system. So undamped natural frequency in hertz is going to be given by the following equation here. The F sub n is equal to cycles per second. Well, now we have our cycles and we have our seconds that we've interpreted from that hard copy of the plot there. So we have 1.25 cycles and seconds of 0 0.4 seconds. So we do the math there. We find that our natural frequency F sub n is equal to 3.125 hertz. So now from that information there, we can then convert this to radians per second because it asks us to solve for it in hertz and in radians per second. So in radians per second, we do this here. We say, okay, if we want to go from F sub n to omega, to omega there, omega sub n is equal to 2 pi times that frequency in hertz F sub n there. Plug in our known value here that we just solved for our F sub n, 3.125 hertz. Plug that in and what we get for our omega sub n is 19.64 radians per second. So now the other thing that they asked us to solve for in this problem was our period. So we know from the relationship here, T sub n, our period here, is equal to 1 over our F sub n, our natural frequency there. Plug in our known value for F sub n, 3.125. So T of n is equal to 1 over 3.125. Do out our math there. T of n is equal to 0 0.32 seconds there. So those are the two things that they asked us to solve for. So now I want to do our double check. We've interpreted and we think we've roughly got it there. Let's regraph this based upon the calculated natural frequency period and our amplitude and our intersect at the y-axis there. And with that information, let's plot it and see how the two plots compare. So recall now if we're dealing with a sine function, y is equal to sine of x is going to intersect our y-axis at 0, 0. Now that's not the case for us here. But we also know that y equal to cosine of x intersects the y-axis at 0, 1. That's where we are. It intersects the y-axis at 1 right there. So we're dealing with a cosine function for the plot that they gave us. So our general equation that we're going to follow here is U of T, the value on our y-axis here, is going to be equal to A, which is given to us in the problem statement, times the cosine of omega T. So this is our general equation in order to plot the information that we solve for in the first part of the problem to double check our graph. So now let's plug in our known information that we solved for back into our general equation in order to plot this. So we can see here u of t is equal to a times the cosine of omega t. We know this is our general form that we're going to use. a is our amplitude, omega is going to be our frequency, and t is going to be our time there. So we've already solved for our omega. Omega we found to be 19.64, we're dealing with radians per second here. From the plot in the given data, we know that a is equal to 1. So we can plug in our a value here frequency value there. And now we look at our plot again here for time. And we see the time, if we go back to our original plot, is from zero to one second. So now it's going to be kind of up to us to how accurate we want to be with this when we're plotting this out. So I've chosen to go with a time interval of 0 0.02. And what I would do is I'd look at this and if it wasn't quite enough to give me the curve I wanted, I could increase this to 0 0.01. Or if it was too many data points and it was taking too long, I could go the other direction as well. But I think this is a pretty modest uh, interval to go with to start off with. So I, we can do this in MATLAB, we can do this in Python, we can do this in Excel. This is a pretty simple, straightforward plot. I'm just going to show you how to do this in Excel for this one here. So now we head over to Excel and what I can do is plot this here. And again, what I've done is I've started from zero and I go all the way up to one here. And I went in an interval of 0.02 all the way up. My A stays constant the entire time all the way through. A is equal to one all the way to, through. Our omega sub n is 19.64 all the way through there. So I have all these columns set up for my plot here. And then what I do is I come over here and I uh, 
program in the equation in order to find the cosine. So it's B2, which my B is my A. There's my A times the cosine of omega T, where C column is my omega and A column is my time. So I have this plot here. I can carry this down for every single time. I plot it. Then all you do is you highlight column A, highlight column D, go to insert, come down here. And what you would do is go to this here and you can see how that plot came about there that you're seeing there. So I've already done that. This is my plot here. I've gone through and labeled it. You can see everything here. So now what we want to do is pull some data points off of this and compare it to our plot that we were given in the problem statement. So now I compare the plot that we did in Excel to the given plot in the problem statement here. Now what I did as an Excel was you can go through at any point along this graph here. We can then get the intercept points for the X and Y coordinates for that individual point. So I went right over here to where it intersected the zero uh, axis right there. And I was able to obtain the time from there. And it did check out to be at point A of 0 0.4 there. And just visually, I look at this. Okay, this starts here. There we go. There's our A. There's our A. Right over here, we have this data here, here. So this is just visually comparing these two very, very close to what we had before. Now we could take this a step further and we could overlay it and look there. But this was just a quick double check to make sure I was doing it approximately right when I pulled this point down here from A down to our axis here for time in order to get our frequency and period to plot this thing. So now what I have is I now have a set of data all the way along and a function that represents that data as well.